Hey everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to be talking through all the books that I read in February but I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently to how I usually do my wrap-ups. I don't actually know if anyone's going to notice anything different but I wanted to mention it just in case because I wanted to try and find a way to make filming wrap-ups more enjoyable. Basically wrap-ups usually take me the longest to film and at the end I always end up with a bad back and a sore throat and I hate it. I do like having a record of all of the books that I've read and so I don't want to stop doing wrap-ups but it's getting to a point where I can't sit and film for hours because it's causing me a lot of pain and a lot of stress. So what I've done this month is I've limited myself to three bullet points per book and I'm hoping that means that I'll still be able to describe what the book is about and I'll still be able to talk about what I liked and what I didn't like but it won't take me as long to film. I hope that makes sense because at the moment I'm kind of in two minds. Either I carry on doing these sit down style videos where like I do a wrap up all in one go or I could try doing like a vlog style wrap up. So like throughout the month when I finish a book I sit down and film a clip then and put them all together at the end. If you do have any feedback then please let me know in the comments. Let me know if you prefer these shorter style wrap ups or if you would prefer like a longer vlog style wrap up. I will also still have timestamps down below if there are any particular books that you're interested in then you can skip ahead. So the first book I read this month was Regretting You by Colleen Hoover which is an adult contemporary romance that follows a mother and a daughter. I really enjoyed this book, it was very dramatic and emotional and it felt kind of like a soap opera because it went in a few directions that I wasn't expecting. The only thing that I didn't really love is that the book is told from two different perspectives so the mother and the daughter and I really liked the mom's perspective but the daughter was really really annoying and there was a lot of teenage angst which isn't my kind of thing but I was able to tolerate it better as it went on and so that's why I gave this four stars overall. The next book I read was Flow by Kennedy Ryan and this is a really short novella about a woman called Bristol who goes to visit her brother in California where she meets his friend Grip and they have this instant attraction and this instant chemistry and they start to form a friendship slash relationship. This is the first book in a series and I would really like to continue it because I liked Kennedy Ryan's writing and I thought she did a really good job of building the chemistry between the two characters. I sometimes find with novellas that there's not enough time for the relationship to develop like in a way that feels natural and that doesn't feel rushed but I didn't find that with this book at all and so I gave this one four stars. The next book I read was Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas and this is a romance that follows two characters Misha and Ryan who have been pen pals since they were I think 11 like since they were kids and they're now 18 and they've never met or seen each other like in person but Misha accidentally comes across Ryan's Facebook profile and the story kind of goes from there. I really liked the writing in this and I really like to read more of Penelope Douglas's books. However, I didn't love the characters and the relationship felt kind of toxic because Misha basically lies to Ryan about who he really is so that he can integrate himself into her life. And that made me feel a little bit uncomfortable. I didn't want to give this book any less than three stars because I did still find it very gripping and I read it quite quickly it just wasn't to my personal taste. The next book I read was Go Deep by Rilsey Adams so this is a short and steamy novella about a woman who writes erotic fiction novels and she's been celibate for over a year or about 18 months I think it is because her last boyfriend cheated on her and she started to feel like it's affected her work because her last book didn't get very good reviews and so she asks her best friend for some help in finding some inspiration. I liked the steamy scenes in this and I would recommend it if you like the friends to lovers trope. It's only around 120 pages so it was also a really quick read. My only wish is that it had been a bit longer because I did find that because it was short I didn't feel very invested in the characters and their relationship. However I would happily try other books by the same author. The next book I read was A Court of Frost and Starlight by Sarah J Mass. So this is the fourth book in the A Court Thorns and Roses series or technically it's 3.5 because as you can see it's a really short novella. I know a lot of people hate this book and I can see why because nothing really happens. I think if I'd read the first three books when they came out and then I'd waited years and years for a new book in this series and I'd got this then I probably would have been pretty annoyed but as it was it was fine like I had a good time reading it. I loved being back in this world with these characters 
but it's not amazing and I can see why it gets a lot of hate. So the next book I read was A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass, which I'm having to hold up with two hands because it's really heavy, but this came out in February and it was one of my most anticipated new book releases for 2021. I do have a whole spoiler filled reading vlog for this, which I'll leave down below if you wanted to check it out. But I was surprised by how much I enjoyed this book. I knew I would like it, but I was nervous because of the characters that it focuses on. However, I really loved the emotional journey that the characters went on through this book and I really loved seeing their relationship develop. I gave it four stars in the end because I feel like with the original Court of Thorns and Roses series, those are 50-50 fantasy and romance, whereas with this it was probably more 80% romance and 20% fantasy and I wanted just a little more from the plot. I feel like that was really lacking. Obviously there's nothing wrong with that and I did still give it four stars overall. It just didn't give me that new favourite feeling. The next book I read was The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden. So this is the third book in the Winter Night trilogy, which is a historical fantasy series that's set in Russia. In some ways this was my favourite book in the series, but also it made me realise that while I love the writing in this series and I love the atmosphere and the setting, I didn't feel very emotionally attached to the characters. And I don't know how to say this without spoilers, but whenever a character was in any kind of danger, I didn't care if they lived or died. And I don't know if that sounds really mean. I did still give this book four stars overall and I would really recommend it. I also feel like this is one of those books that played almost like a movie in my head. I feel like because of the setting and how it's written very descriptively, does that make sense? I don't know. Basically what I'm trying to say is that I feel like this book would make a really good TV show or movie and I would like to see that. The next book I read was The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. And this is a YA contemporary that follows a girl called Ziamara who discovers slam poetry as a way of expressing herself and it also looks at the relationship that she has with her mom and her family in general but especially her mom who is very religious. It's a novel that's written in verse which is basically poetry and I listened to the audiobook for this which is narrated by the author and it was incredible like Elizabeth Acevedo has the most powerful compelling voice and I felt like I was listening to Ziamara as she was telling me her story. I did read another book by this author last year and I enjoyed it but I feel like I enjoyed this so much more because I listened to the audiobook. I feel like it just added so much more emotion and I'd really recommend it. The next book I read was The Black Flamingo by Dean Atter. So this is another YA contemporary that's written in verse and it's basically about a boy called Michael who is both mixed race and gay and it's all about him discovering his identity. So you follow him from a very young age right up until he starts university and joins the Drag Society. Again, I really love the audiobook for this. It's narrated by the author and I found it really engaging. I felt like I was listening to this boy Michael tell me his story. It's also really short. I think in total it's around four hours or less than four hours. So if you're looking for a short audio book, then I'd really recommend this. The final book that I read this month was Written in the Stars by Alexandria Belfler. So this is an adult romance that's a fake dating, hate to love situation with a female female romance. That's pretty much how I'd describe this book in one sentence. It's also a very loose retelling of Pride and Prejudice. Like it's not a direct retelling, but there are some similarities with the characters' names and their personalities. What I really liked about this book was that it was quite well balanced. I don't know if that's gonna make sense, but you had some moments that were very cute and funny, but also some moments that were more like hot and steamy. And I like books that are like that, that are well balanced. And I don't know what I'm doing with my hands here. I'm really sorry. The only reason I gave this four stars and not five stars is because I felt like it started to lose pace towards the end, especially in the last third. I felt like it was dragging in places, but then it wrapped up really quickly. But otherwise, I really liked the audiobook for this. I don't think I've ever listened to a romance audiobook before, but this has convinced me that I definitely want to do more of that. Okay, so I think that brings me to the end of the video and the end of this wrap-up. So thanks for watching if you've made it this far. If you've read any of the books that I've talked about in this wrap-up, then please let me know in the comments what you thought of them. And don't forget to give this this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time. Bye!